Hey everyone, welcome back to some Bloodcrest Manor content and to part two of how to make your very own paper mache pumpkin. Now in the last episode I detailed a lot of stuff out for you guys of how to make your form, how to put your paper mache sheets on, uh, where to put your holes for your stem and your bottom, and uh, how to detail out your face. Now, one thing I forgot to go over with you guys was is that there's two different forms of doing this. You can either do this like the way I'm doing it in this up video, which is where you put a skin on it later. And that's going to give you a smoother, uh, smoother finish, but it's also going to provide all these wrinkles that you're seeing. Um, to me, the wrinkles look really cool and they add a nice design for like when you're wanting like a rotted look to it. And you can kind of see it sewn in the stem right there. But, um, if you're not looking for that, then there's another way you can go about it. And that's the same style I did for this. Basically what you do is when you're putting your paper clay on, you just want to paint it down with some paper mache and that will really help smooth it out to the texture that you're looking for. Um, if you don't want the wrinkles, then that's how you have to do it. Just paint your, just paint your paper mache on after you lay your clay and while it's still wet and that will help it smooth out and it'll look like a smooth finish. But for this episode, and for this example, we're going to be working with the paper towel method. And uh, like I said, that's the method I use for most of these up here. I really just like uh, how it looks and how, it, how, how the finish comes out for it. But alright everyone, uh, in this episode we're going to be getting into some different uh, topics with this. and. We're going to be talking about how to install your stem, uh, how to put the detailing on the eyes and the mouth, and we're going to be talking about how to seal this and with what. Now uh, as we go, I'll be showing you how to seal this, um, but what I use to seal it is bar varnish and exterior paint. Now it doesn't have to be these two brands. I found other brands and used other brands in both departments and it all works just as dandy. I do like Old Master. It's like a little bit of a uh, more liquidy uh, spar varnish. Like most of them are kind of like a thicker and it has it's a little bit more difficult to deal with. So I kind of like this one more. But like I said, whatever is cheapest and easiest for you to use is what I'd probably recommend. Uh, the only reason I have Rust-Oleum exterior black is because that's the only exterior black paint I could find in my town. I kind of live in a smaller area, so I didn't have access to anything else. But just so you know, that's what you'll need. You'll also end up needing some of this uh, if you want a yellow finish on the inside. Now, if you want it to be red, purple, pink, blue, it's all up to you. Uh, but for me personally, I like that yellow finish because when you put a candle in this, it really comes through nicely. Um, so I recommend doing something that is uh, like a weather resistant and waterproof uh, heavy duty type. And I use uh, this farm and implement Rust-Oleum uh, yellow spray paint. But all right everyone, so that's it for now and I'll be talking back to you in just a moment. Ooh. All right everyone, so now we're gonna get into making our face and our mouth for the pumpkin. Uh, we've already got it cut out, but now we just need to make it textured and rised. So we're just going to put a little rise on these eyes and the mouth, and it's going to make it really stand out as lips and like eyelids for this pumpkin. It really does help add a biological feel to it and just makes it feel more realistic. Basically what I do to achieve this is I take some uh, paper clay in my hand and I kind of roll it down to where it's more of like a little line of it. Uh, it's not very thick, you just want like a little thin line of it. And then you place it onto the line of the, where you've cut and then you just mash it with your thumbs on both sides and what they'll do is it'll create beautiful rises just like you see right there. Thumbs up indeed. So uh, what you're going to do is you're going to do that for the, both eyes and for the mouth and then you'll be good for that. Now in this case what I typically recommend is, is I, I do the uh, eyes first and then I set it aside and let the eyes dry overnight and then I'll do the mouth. The reason I do this is because you can do both um, at the same time and get them done in the same day. But the reason I don't is because it's very easy for your hand to mistakenly hit one of the parts you've already done and then it just kind of ruins it and then you got to go back and do it again. So in my opinion it's just more work uh, to try to do it all in one time 
instead of uh, separating it out to where you can keep your hands separate from it. But other than that, everyone, that'll be it for this one. Alright everyone, so now we're going to get to the stem. The stem is a little bit more of a difficult phase than the others, but it's still very much attainable. Now for simplicity, I recommend using a coat hanger. And you basically just want to take the coat hanger piece that you use, and you want to make it to the size of the stem it's going to be. So in the case of this stem, the, the total length is probably somewhere in the range of like 7 to 9 inches. I didn't get an exact measurement, but you can kind of tell for yourself as I'm doing it. And basically what you want to do with this is you're just going to roll it into some paper, uh, some uh, newspaper, and you're going to tape it with some scotch tape. And you're just going to make that throughout the whole thing. Now if you want to make it curved, if you want to make it go pointed down or twisted the whole way up, or if you want to make it really short, you can do this however you want. It's very, very uh, malleable to what you want. But once you get to the stem as you want it, you're just going to put your good bead of, of uh, hot glue on the top. And basically what I do is, is I go around the entire edge and then I sister it in with some, um, with some beads on the top going up, going up and down. And then uh, once that dries, I go through to the bottom and I just put a huge amount onto the bottom. And if you ever heard that phrase, one dot is a lot, it is not in this case. You can use a fair amount of hot glue with this and it is not a problem. You just want to make sure that stem is never going to go anywhere because a good chance is, is the stem is going to become your handle for the pumpkin itself. Now once that hot glue dries, all you got to do is take your paper clay and just go through and put you a, a layer on it just like you did with the pumpkin below. You're not looking for any type of detail in this or anything like that. You're just trying to get a good little bead on it and that's it. Now you can put a paper mache layer on this before you do the clay and it will help the clay stick to it much better. But as I've noticed this just adds more time to the process and it isn't as necessary as it seems. So you can just go ahead and put it right on top of the scotch tape and newspaper and it should adhere pretty decently as long as your paper clay is made correctly. Alright everyone, now that the stem is dried, uh, you can go ahead and add your details to it. And basically for I, what I do for that is, is I just come over the top with a few of those lines like we did on the mouth. And when I add a few rivets to it just to make sure it stands out. But other than that, your stem will be good to go. Once you've done that, we're going to go ahead and do a part of this that I mentioned in the intro, which is a paper towel skin. Basically you just want to take brown paper towel that you'd find at any public bathroom or uh, anywhere like an office building, anywhere that has like a janitorial staff most likely has this. Uh, you can find people that will give them to you for free, like almost like half rolls and things like that. Uh, but in my case, I just went ahead and bought a, uh, a supply box of it online at Amazon. And I found this to be the easiest and just honestly the cheapest way to go about it. Um, now, if you want to, like I said, you can find this stuff in the wild at public bathrooms if you really want to go for that. But uh, honestly, I, I highly recommend just go ahead, buy you some, and it will last you an extremely long time. And even if you don't use it all, it's still paper towels. You can use it in that regard too. But so uh, for this, uh, I kind of just strip it out around the eyes and the mouth to make sure that I don't have any like loose edges. You just want to make sure that all the edges are put down really well. 
but also you want to make sure you do have some wrinkles in there. You don't have to wrinkle it yourself because it will certainly do it by itself during the process. But other than that everyone, you're just going to put a layer of that on top and the bottom and uh, you will have a beautifully wrinkly uh, ready to use pumpkin. Now uh, once this step is done, it's going to take some time for this to dry. I recommend letting it sit for about 7 days after this step. Um, the reason I say that is because the next step will be sealing it up and if there is any moisture on the inside of your paper clay or your paper mache or if something just hasn't dried properly yet, like especially with putting on this wet paper towel, uh, it, it does definitely moisten it up. Uh, if any of it is moist when you go to seal it up, it will be a disaster. It will begin rotting and it will begin mildewing and it will just fall apart on you and it will be very sad. <clears throat> so definitely uh, give it the time it needs to dry properly and you will be very happy with what you get. You can go about five days if you feel confident, but I, I just think seven days is the best way to do it. It's the safest and it's also the most consistent. But alright everyone, so that's all for that and I'll be talking back to you here in just a moment. Alright everyone, so now we are at our 7 day mark, it has been plenty of time for this to dry and now it is ready for its sealing. As you can see, we have a beautifully wrinkly, gorgeous pumpkin ready for our sealant. And so what I do for this is, is like I said in the intro, is we use some spar varnish. Uh, spar varnish is a marine varnish, it's basically meant for like wood on a sailboat. Um, and it stops and repels salt water and fresh water all the uh, light. So, um, in my opinion, it doesn't get much better of a sealant than this. Uh, this might be a tricky thing for some of you to find depending on where you live. You can certainly find it on Amazon, but you know, you just want to watch your prices. Try to get whichever cheapest, but I do really like this old Masters. They do a really good job in my opinion, and uh, I like it more than the Rustoleum brand. But so uh, anyway, so what we'll be doing with this is, is you want to take a paintbrush or a sponge brush in this case, that you never plan to use again. And the simple reason for that is, is because the spar varnish is going to destroy whatever brush or sponge brush that you use. In my case, I ended up being gifted a bunch of these sponge brushes back during Christmas. My family gave me a bunch of them. Uh, they were in like these variety packs. So um, that's why I have them. But in all honesty, I'm not really a big fan of them. Uh, when it comes to spar varnish. I like using them because they're easily disposable but at the same time um, I feel that a brush is an easier method of doing it. Now uh, once you get your top layer on and it's had a day to dry because it will take about a day uh, and you'll know when it's dry because it's no longer very tacky. If it's still wet and you touch it it will be very sticky. Uh, but once you get your top layers done you're going to then put it on the interior of your pumpkin and you want to put it on very generously. You want this stuff to really soak into this pumpkin, which is another reason why you want it dry. If it's, dry, if it's very dry, then it's going to suck it up very well. 
and uh, your pumpkin will then take on this appearance of kind of like, like it did when it was wet, except now it's dry with spar varnish. So uh, just put you a fat layer of that on the inside. Uh, make sure you cover every inch of it. You don't want any spots left untouched. If you miss a spot, accidents happen. Uh, you know, I mean, it's not the end of the world. You have multiple other layers of sealant coming up here shortly. And that, that will certainly cover it. But you wanted to make sure you do the best you can to cover every inch of it. Alright everyone, so now that we have our spar varnish on and everything is on there good and dried and ready to go, we're going to now start with the interior of our pumpkin using a white exterior paint. Um, you want to start on the inside first because if you're doing it like I'm doing, then you're going to have a black exterior paint on the outside. And uh, if you have that white coming through on top of that black, it's, uh, it's going to be a problem with your paint later. So uh, start with the inside first and then work your way to the outside after that. Now if you're doing a whimsical pumpkin and the inside and the outside are going to be white, uh, basically you want a white outside for a whimsical because it's going to make it a brighter color. Uh, once you go to do your detail painting. Uh, if you're doing that, then it doesn't matter. You can do the inside or outside first because it's all going to be white no matter what. But if you're doing a decrepit or rotten pumpkin like I'm doing and it's going to be black on the outside, then you definitely want to start with your uh, white on the inside so that way when you put your black on it's a full, full outer shell of black with no white. Uh, this will help you with your detail painting. The detail painting, it'll kind of show through if there's any white on that black. So you just want to uh, do it in sequence. Uh, definitely learned my, uh, the hard way on this one. But alright everyone, so uh, once you get both of these layers on, you'll be good to go for your detail painting. could see right there the inside of this pumpkin was completely covered every inch of it with the white exterior that is exactly what you're looking for but if you see that white exterior on the outside that right there is why I said we want to do the inside first then the outside last
All right, everyone, so now that we have your interior and exterior paint on, we're just gonna go ahead and finish up the interior with this yellow spray paint. I use personally Rust-Oleum Farm and Implement. It's a heavy duty spray paint that's meant to handle weather really well. And it also adheres to the pumpkin on the inside very well. Um, you don't have to use something that's this heavy duty. You could go with something a little bit lighter weight and be just fine. But to me, it's better to go ahead and be safe and sorry and just go ahead and use another form of sealing it from weather. <clears throat> this also has a really good vibrant yellow that I like. And uh, as you can see here in just a moment, every square inch of the inside is sprayed and we're good to go. All right, everyone, so that is going to be it for part two of how to make your own paper mache pumpkin. Um, we have gotten a really far way into this. I've shown you everything from making your stem to uh, the detailing with the clay and the sealing it up. Uh, all these are incredibly important facets of making your paper mache pumpkin. Um, the detail overall and the face that you sculpt is really going to show and really reflect what you're going for. Um, in the next episode, I'm going to be showing you how we make it go from that pitch black on the outside to more of this orange rotted look, as well as this green stem. Uh, how we get to, uh, to just a black pumpkin to fully colored in and then the final layers of sealant. But other than that everyone, that's going to be it for this. And like I said, this isn't a very hard thing to do. Almost anyone can do it as long as you have the time and the uh, want to do it. There's going to be some trial and error just like with anything new you try. But you got me to help you. If you have any questions, just hit me up in the comments below and I'll be happy to answer any questions or any issues that you have as best as I can. Um, but other than that everyone, that's going to be it for this one. And until next time, I'll talk to you then. Mm -hmm.